I'm gonna show you guys just a, a few headlines. I'm not gonna, not gonna dive into the articles because I want to show you guys the messaging that's coming from uh, the establishment. I don't know why this is loading here. Let me refresh this. Here it is. It's paying for CNN. Break up the Putin Xi Jinping No Limit Partnership. So, as I said before, you don't need to trick the right anymore on China. Tug Carlson and these people, Jack Posaibic or whatever, they are all in on going to war with China and escalating against China. So they need to find a strategy to get the liberals to want to go to war with China. So they already know the liberals hate Russia. They losing their mind over Ukraine. So now the whole thing is to tie Putin and Xi Jinping and like, oh, my God, look at Putin and Xi Jinping. We hate Putin. Shouldn't you hate Xi Jinping, too? Look, this is probably getting the headline, which is patently not true. <laughs> Russia is losing in Ukraine. It's from Blue B- Bloomberg. Russia is losing in Ukraine. So is China. What? <laughs> A year later, it's clear that Xi Jinping's decision to embrace Vladimir Putin on the eve of the invasion was a terrible bet. See, they, they just say shit. You guys, you guys know the UK economy is in absolute fucking shambles. Even more than Joe did say, I don't know if you saw it. More than Joe did say, like, yo, this shit is bad, son. <laughs> you got millions of homeless in the United States. Bad, son. That's Congress cannot that. have, they can't have a approval rating more than 20%. It always fl- fluctuates between 15 and 19%. Joe Biden is historically unpopular. The Congress is historically unpopular. But meanwhile, they won't tell you that Russia and Xi Jinping, people who got 70 plus approval rating, they're struggling. The, the quality of life and education in Russia and China is significantly better than, the, than our country. The quality of life, life expectancy, I don't know. Hey, by the way, liberals, women can have abortion in Russia. We can't hear. Quote, who's the authoritarian state, though? So they want to paint them as losing. China expanded trade with Africa in BRICS. Lula want to grow more with China and Brazil, the largest uh, uh, country in Latin America. It's the West who isolated themselves. They even lost Saudi Arabia, who met with Russia and China. So what they're saying here is the exact opposite of reality. And I cannot stress that enough. They just say shit, CJ. And my last thing I want to add on this. I have something after you to add to this same segment. I forgot yeah, about the yeah, video. I yeah, found I'll pass you at this part because Zelensky is doing it again. You guys see how they they uh doing this narrative? That oh Russia, China is with Russia. China is with Russia. So you had Zelensky with this quote: "If China allies itself with Russia, there will be a world war." That's Zelensky once again fantasizing for a world war. You guys see how all the media and all this stuff come together on this stuff. You got Anthony Blinken do a press tour. You go, you go and meet the press, talking about China is helping Russia with no evidence. You got the media talking about, like, you literally Google China and no Russia right now. There's a media all. blitz. I just put up two examples of it. Of it. I, there's a media blitz on this. And then you, and then right as it's happening, you have Zelensky that says, if China allies itself with Russia, there'll be a world war. But apparently, the entirety of the West and NATO can ally with, with the fascist Zelensky, but China can't ally with one of his biggest partners and geopolitically strategic allies. Do you guys see the absurdity of the West that no anti-imperialist should be able to accept, that Marianne Wilson and Bernie Sanders have no criticism of? Bring that all around. Go ahead, CJ. You can add to the segment. It's then, true. Um, it's truly it's truly useless to be a candidate if your number one thing against him is not war. Trump picked up on it, and that's what he's truly doing. Truly useless. Oh, yeah, but you see, Trump, regardless of if he believed it, he picked up on hey, what I want to do is stake a stance against the war. We already have right people, meaning right wing people who are on board with that. And we saw that with the Rage Against the War machine. Trump picked up on it. Anybody who goes against Trump will lose if they're still talking about this fucking Ukraine war. You will lose. And that includes Marion Williams. They got this fantasy hump somehow she and she will be mollywopped. That's an old school word by Donald Trump. You had you had breaking points that just said that Marion Wilson is the person that could bring together the working class and the disinfected. Meanwhile, there are thousands of people at the uh the uh Rage Against the Machine rally. She's not gonna get no people who support her who gets ending the war because she agreed with Biden on funding Ukraine. It's, it's ridiculous. 
It's absolutely ridiculous. I want to yeah, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Let I want you. Play, you yeah, let me play this video. Let me play this video that goes with this. This is the part I was asking you earlier. Had you seen this part about um, being interviewed? I, I, I just finally located it. it. Was Ben Norton who posted it? This video. And it's um, the foreign minister of the U.S., Germany, and Ukraine told the world, quote, yep. neutrality is not an option. Let me zoom in on this. It's crazy, uh, man. Neutrality. Oops, there we go. Neutrality is not an option, end quote, in the West proxy war against Russia. They were implicit, implicitly criticizing the global south, which is neutral and represents six plus billion people and this is a short and the nato left thing these people are the good guys the nato left thing these yeah. people are the good guys it's ridiculous but let's listen Neutrality is not an option because then you are standing on the side of the aggressor. And this is the plea we are also giving next week to the world again. Please take a side a side for peace, a side for Ukraine, a side for the humanitarian international law. And these times this means also delivering ammunition so Ukraine can defend ourselves. As Annalena said, there is no neutral position when it comes to uh, a war of aggression. Uh, there is no balance. We're constantly engaged with partners around. Isn't what that, that's exactly what they're doing with Israel and Palestine? Aren't they kind of acting like they're neutral while quietly funding them? It's so bizarre to hear a imperialist white supremacy country um, has have this because, I mean, it's just not tr a tradition in their own country. Look at the white, how white culture were neutral on the enslavement of Africans and just sat back while they were, it didn't involve them. It's just not a tradition of this country to have this, to have this point of view when, because we have been the aggressor 100% of the time. Uh, let's finish out the, the videos a few more, a few more seconds. On the world who um, have different uh, perspectives on this, different ways that they can help. And from our perspective, first of all, again, you really can't be neutral. Yes, we see an unprecedented unity of one part of the world that stands for principles and rules this world is based on. But we also see other parts of the world. Some are neutral, which means effectively, you know, the support of Russia. You're talking about the South in Africa. It's They're talking same. about the global south in Africa. Some are, are calling uh, on uh, to seize the uh, supply of weapons to Ukraine, which also means that Russia is going to win. Every nation and every... I'll pause there because then uh, Ben comes in. So, but you, yeah. see, you see the little snippets, Nick. It's just... These people is about to march us into a... a if Russia teams... Uh, if, if there's a war... First off, the United States is going to lose in a war individually with either one of these countries. And then they team up. It's just not something. I don't understand if people understand what they're talking about here. And if, then you have these you know, bullies that, say, if you don't support a bully, then you're you're you can't be niche neutral in this war of aggression. This is crazy. Go ahead. Nate. Yeah, it's literally the most insane ideology. Support us in our war, which it is because they support it. And they uh, support the side that started the war in 2014. They have a side. If you don't pick our side, you're against us. It's, it's an insane position to, to, to take. And it shows the mindset that go that our ruling class have. You have Germany's officials uh, that criticize the West for essentially strong arming their allies and to support them in these wars, even in, if it doesn't benefit the countries economically. They want everyone to abandon their sovereignty in order to support the West agenda. And if they disagree, they're considered uh, unhinged. Like Hungary is a great example. Mm. Uh, this is a very short interjection here. I just wanted to show this headline, headline yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You had Hungary's uh, Orban accuses EU of prolonging war. That Viktor Orban, uh, the leader of Hungary, accuses EU of prolonging war. Now, Hungary is one of many countries that have been suffering because of anti-Russian sanctions, just like the UK. The Morning Joe did, does a segment talking about how the UK economy is destroyed, and then they can literally do the segment the next day talking about how the West is winning over Putin. 
It's, um, it's uh, absurd. This is a great tweet thread. Hungary reveals the cost of anti-Russian sanctions. Sanctions introduced by the EU against Russia over its military operation in Ukraine has cost Hungary's economy $10 billion, but have failed to stop the conflict. That was Viktor Orban said. And then they explained how it had a d- devastating impact on energy prices, uh, raising costs throughout the economy. This is what Europe is going through. They're destroying these people's economies. And then uh, you had the West that slander and attack Hungary. They attack Turkey. They attack anyone. Anytime any cracks start to form, you have NATO, which is a fast fascistic mafia alliance that demand compliance out of the entire continent of Europe. And people don't think the United States having colonized Europe 